Hi, Buster and I came to live in Rome about eight years ago. experience. Although when you move to a new country, you have to learn a lot of new things from the mundane, like the best place to get a drink, to the more serious, like learning Italian and of course learning something about Italian football. Actually, we divided the responsibilities. Ho preso io l'impegno di imparare una nuova lingua and I left the football to Buster. And though I still know almost nothing about Italian football, today I want to talk about something I know a lot about, the American health care system. I saw the best and I saw the worst of our health care system. I saw the best because I saw people brought back from, literally from the brink of death by the generosity of an organ donor and by the dedication and skill of a doctor. But I saw the worst because that option wasn't available to everybody. I was what was sometimes called a gatekeeper. That means that I had to judge whether patients had the benefits or didn't have the benefits for an organ transplant they needed. In 2002, the Institute of Medicine released a study in which they found that 18,000 people every year die from lack of insurance. But not because there's not a cure for their disease, but because they don't have access to that cure. 18,000 people a year, breaking that down, that's 50 people every day. At any given time over the last decade, about 15% of Americans have been uninsured. That's about 45 million Americans. When I worked for the hospital, we did everything we could to try to find insurance benefits for those who were uninsured. But it wasn't always possible. And when I came to Italy, I began to write a book about these stories because this is not just anecdotal evidence. These were people, people like you and me, who were unfortunate enough to get sick maybe lose their jobs and consequently lose their insurance coverage. And even for those who were covered, it was not always easy because insurance companies have tremendous power over the decisions that you and your doctor make about your care. Your insurance company may refuse to pay for something saying it's not medically necessary when your doctor thinks it's the best chance to save your life. So who's the winner in this system? I did a little study on the salaries of top insurance executives and they ran anywhere from a low of 27 million annually, 42 million, 57 million and even 135 million dollars a year. Let's take one right out of the middle, 42 million. Breaking that down, that's 3.5 million a month or about 113,000 a day including weekends. And some of that money is made in bonuses, particularly if the insurance company makes a good profit. Some of it is in stock awards and this is a very important point. Many insurance companies and even some hospitals are publicly traded. That means people can buy stock in these companies and share the profits. So not only do top insurance executives get paid a fortune, the insurance company stockholders also have to make a profit. And where does that money come from? A good part of it comes from the money that you and I pay in premiums to the insurance company, minus what they spend for our health care. So in this system, there's a clear financial incentive involved in denying payment for procedures. You see, that's what a market-based health care plan really is. Some people get very, very rich, and the rest of us, well, some of us even die because we can't get access to the health care that we need. So forgive me, Senator McCain, but rather than a market-based health care system, what about a health-based health care system where every American could have access to the health care that they need to get healthy and to stay healthy? We often say that we have the best health care in the world in the United States, but I can testify that that doesn't mean very much when you can't have access to it. 
A great country is not measured only by a strong economy and a powerful military. Greatness also has to be measured by how we treat the weakest among us, children, the elderly, and the sick. I support Barack Obama because I believe that he can make us great also by that standard. I'm an American abroad and I support Barack Obama for president.